Welcome to a lesson on indefinite integration or anti-differentiation using the substitution method. The substitution method is a method used to find the integral of a composite function. The substitution method simplifies the integral so that we can find the antiderivative using a basic integration formula. So notice how in this integral we have a composite function where the inner function is g of x and notice how the integrand also contains g prime of x. Using substitution, we can simplify this to the integral of f of u integrated with respect to u. Notice how by performing substitution, we'll make a change of variables. And here the steps will follow. Step one, we'll choose a substitution, u equals g of x. Usually it is best to choose the inner part of the composite function, such as a quantity raised to a power. Two, we'll compute differential u, where differential u equals g prime of x times dx. Three, write the integral in terms of the variable u. Four, find the resulting integral in terms of u. Five, replace u with g of x to obtain an antiderivative in terms of x. And step six, we can always check our answer by differentiating. Let's look at our first example. Notice how we have the quantity two x to the fourth plus seven raised to the seventh power. So the general strategy is to let the quantity raised to the power be equal to u. So here we'd let u equal two x to the fourth plus seven. But part of the substitution method is to recognize that if we let u equal part of the integrand, then its derivative will also be in the integrand. Notice how the derivative of two x to the fourth plus seven is going to be eight x to the third. So once we select u, the next step is to find differential u, where differential u will be equal to the derivative of two x to the fourth plus seven with respect to x times dx. So we'd have eight x to the third times dx. Now looking at the integral again, since u is equal to two x to the fourth plus seven, we'd have u to the seventh here. Notice the remaining part of the integral is eight x to the third dx, which is equal to differential u. We don't always have a perfect match here for differential u. Sometimes we have to manipulate this equation here, but in this case we have a perfect match. The next step is to write the integral in terms of u. So in terms of u, we'd have the integral of, again, this is u to the seventh, and then eight x to the third dx is equal to du. So notice how this integral simplifies nicely to the integral of u to the seventh, integrated with respect to u. So in this form, we can apply the basic power rule of integration given here. So we would have u to the seven plus one, that's eight, divided by eight, plus c, or if we want one eighth, u to the eighth, plus c. But our goal here is to find the antiderivative in terms of x, not u. So now we substitute two x to the fourth plus seven for u. So the antiderivative would be one eighth, times the quantity two x to the fourth plus seven raised to the eighth plus c. So this is our antiderivative, which means big F of x is equal to one eighth times the quantity two x to the fourth plus seven raised to the eighth plus c. And the derivative of big F of x should give us the integrand function eight x to the third times the quantity two x to the fourth plus seven raised to the seventh. Let's go ahead and check this. Big F prime of x is equal to one eighth times, to find the derivative of two x to the fourth plus seven raised to the eighth, we'd multiply by eight, and then we'd have two x to the fourth plus seven to the eight minus one or seventh power, and then applying the chain rule, we multiply by the derivative of two x to the fourth plus seven, which is eight x to the third. And the derivative of a constant is zero, so simplifying, Notice here the eighth simplify out, so we'd be left with big F prime of x equals eight x to the third times the quantity two x to the fourth plus seven raised to the seventh, which notice is the integrand function F of x, which means our work is correct. Let's look at another example. Let's first write this using rational exponents because the index is two and we have the quantity four plus x squared to the first, we can write this as the integral of x divided by the quantity four plus x squared to the one half dx. 
And again, because we have four plus x squared raised to the one-half, we'll let u equal four plus x squared. And now we'll find differential u. Differential u is equal to the derivative of four plus x squared with respect to x times dx. So that would be two x times dx. And looking at our integral again, we know four plus x squared is equal to u. Notice how we're left with x dx. And over here we have du equals two x dx. Let's go ahead and solve this equation for x dx by dividing both sides by two. So simplifying, we have one-half differential u is equal to x dx. And now let's write this in terms of u. So we'd have the integral of, notice how our denominator is going to be u to the one-half. And then we have x dx, which we know is equal to one-half du. So let's factor out the one-half, and then we have our differential u. And therefore, our denominator is going to be one. Before we apply our integration formula, though, we do want to move this up to the numerator, which will change the sign of the exponent. So we can write this as one-half times the integral of u to the negative one-half differential u. And then we'll find the antiderivative in terms of u. So we'd have one-half times u to the negative one-half plus one, that's u to the one-half, divided by one-half plus c. Simplifying again, we have one-half and then dividing by one half is the same as multiplying by two, so times two over one times u to the one half plus c. Simplifying, we have u to the one half plus c. And now we substitute four plus x squared for u, so the antiderivative in terms of u is going to be the quantity four plus x squared raised to the one half plus c or well, if we want, we could write this as the square root of four plus x squared plus c. Either of these two forms of the antiderivative would be acceptable. And again, let's go ahead and check this. And to check this, we now know that big F of x is equal to, let's use this form here so that we can find the derivative, the quantity four plus x squared to the one half plus c. So big F prime of x should give us the integrand function. So we'd multiply by one half, one half times the quantity four plus x squared, and then one half minus one is negative one half, times the derivative of the inner function, which would be two x, and the derivative of our constant is zero. So simplifying, the two simplify out. We have a negative exponent here, which will move to the denominator. So this is equal to x, divided by the quantity four plus x squared to the positive one half, or if we want x divided by the square root of four plus x squared. So once again, this verifies our antiderivative is correct. Let's look at one more example. Notice here we have an exponential with an exponent of negative two x to the second. So notice how the exponent is degree two, and we have a degree one term here, so we'll let u equal negative two x to the second. And now we'll find differential u. Differential u is equal to negative four x dx. Looking at our integral, we don't have a negative four x dx, but we do have an x dx. So let's solve for x dx by dividing both sides by negative four. So we know negative one fourth du equals x dx. We do have this coefficient of negative three here, which we'll just factor out. So let's write this in terms of u. Again, we'll factor out the negative three, and then we have the integral of, because negative two x to the squared is equal to u, we have e to the u. We already factored out the negative three, so we have x dx remaining. X dx is equal to negative one-fourth du. So we'll factor out the negative one-fourth, and we have our differential u. Simplifying again, we have positive three-fourths times the integral of e to the u du, which is equal to three-fourths. e to the u is negative two x squared, and then plus c. So this is our antiderivative, which means big F of x is equal to three-fourths 
e to the negative 2x squared plus c. So if we find big F prime of x, we should get the integrand function negative 3x times e to the negative 2x squared. So our derivative is going to be 3 fourths times the derivative of e to the negative 2x squared, which would be e to the negative 2x squared times the derivative of negative 2x squared, that's negative 4x. The derivative of a constant is zero, so now simplifying, we have a common factor of four here and here. So we have big F prime of x equals three times, this would be negative x, so negative three x, e to the negative two x squared, which again is the integrand function f of x. So once again, our work is correct. I think we'll stop here for this part. In part two, we'll take a look at using substitution to evaluate definite integrals. I hope you found this helpful.